Interbreeding with archaic human groups, followed by wholesale population replacement, has been the norm in human history. Archaic Neanderthal populations were replaced by more advanced Neanderthals. Archaic Denisovans were replaced by more advanced Denisovans. And finally, modern humans replaced all. The Denisovans, once little more than a genetic signal hiding inside the genomes of living humans, continue to gain definition as ancient DNA reveals their presence in the deep past of continental Asia. With the recent recovery of a high-coverage genome from the tooth-designated Denisova 25 in a bombshell study, researchers are beginning to trace the outlines of a population far older and more diverse than once imagined. The molar, unearthed in the deep deposits of Denisova Cave and dated to approximately 200,000 years ago, represents the oldest Denisovan genome yet sequenced. More importantly, it suggests a picture of repeated migration and replacement, recurrent contact with Neanderthals and inheritance from even older hominin sources. Taken together, this new genome portrays Denisova 25 as a representative of an early branch of Denisovan ancestry, living before later expansions reshaped the population. The discovery invites a re-examination of how Denisovan spread across Asia, how some lineages vanished while others persisted, and how these groups mixed with Neanderthals and more ancient hominins. It also provides a new frame in which other enigmatic fossils, such as the Harbin cranium from northeastern China and the Baishia caste mandible from the Tibetan plateau, may be situated. These remains appear increasingly linked to a broader Denisovan radiation that spread across the heart of Asia during the Middle Pleistocene. From this single tooth, more than twentyfold genomic coverage has enabled scientists to reconstruct ancestry, date divergence events, and probe the layers of interbreeding beneath Denisovan history. The findings reveal Denisova 25 was part of a small community of only 50 to 60 individuals, suggesting isolation and possible instability in population size. These features, together with signs of inbreeding and a legacy of superarchaic introgression, place this individual near the base of the Denisovan line. Denisova 25 rests deep in the stratigraphy of Denisova Cave's southern chamber. The sediments in which it was found are dated between approximately 200,000 and 170,000 years ago. Molecular dating of the mitochondrial genome, Y chromosome, and nuclear genome all align with this time interval. Crucially, Denisova 25 predates the individual known as Denisova 3 by roughly 140,000 years. When the new genome is compared with Denisova 3, the two individuals form sister branches within the Denisovan cluster, yet their lineages diverged only approximately 15,000 years before Denisova 25 lived. These dates reveal a rapid succession of related groups inhabiting the Altai. It also appears that the Denisovan population represented by Denisova 25 was later replaced by a different Denisovan population, including Denisova 3, arriving from elsewhere. This dynamic process of population turnover fits with what researchers increasingly suspect. The Altai Mountains were not a core homeland of Denisovans, but a boundary zone reached repeatedly by groups migrating from larger source populations to the south or east. Beyond population turnover, Denisova 25's genome provides clarity to broader questions of human evolution. When background regions under selection are removed, the divergence times separating modern humans from archaic hominins and Neanderthals from Denisovans become significantly older than prior estimates. Using neutrally evolving regions, investigators estimate that Neanderthals and Denisovans separated around 600,000 to 500,000 years ago, while modern humans separated from their common ancestral population around 800,000 to nearly 700,000 years ago. These old separations reflect deep population structure and suggest that all three lineages experienced long periods of geographic and reproductive isolation. The demographic signature of Denisova 25 is striking. Approximately 16% of the genome lies within extended blocks of homozygosity, and nearly 9% consists of uninterrupted tracts more than 10 centimorgans long. These findings imply recent parental relatedness, possibly at the level of double first cousins or half-siblings. 
Population size estimates reconstructed from this genome indicate that Denisova 25 belonged to a small group consisting of approximately 50 to 60 individuals. This is comparable to some Neanderthal communities, but much smaller than the estimated communities of later Denisovans, including Denisova 3. The presence of long homozygous tracts suggests that this small group remained isolated for generations. Such seclusion likely reflects the ecological pressures of the Altai region during the Middle Pleistocene. Since these early groups eventually disappear from the Denisova sequence, later replaced by other Denisovans or by Neanderthals, persistence in this area appears to have been difficult. The demographic profile of Denisova 25 offers a clear distinction between early and later Denisovan populations. While the later Denisova 3 individual lived within a much larger community, Denisova 25 came from an earlier wave characterized by small population size, limited gene flow, and heightened inbreeding. This makes Denisova 25 a valuable genetic representative of a population that may sit closer to the ancestral stem of Denisovans. Although the Denisovan fossil record is scant, the few physical remains available reveal a remarkably broad geographic distribution and a surprising degree of morphological consistency. The Harbin cranium, recovered in northeastern China and dated to at least 146,000 years ago, represents the most complete Denisovan skull known. Its size is enormous, perhaps the largest among middle Pleistocene hominins. The Denisova 25 molar, despite its simpler root structure when compared with other Denisovan teeth from the cave, matches the Harbin upper molar in overall outline. This morphological link suggests a shared ancestry between the Altai population represented by Denisova 25 and the Northeast Asian population that produced the Harbin skull. Harbin's huge cranial capacity, broad nasal aperture, and expanded mid-face align with expectations for a cold-adapted population living in harsh northern environments. These traits could signal either convergent adaptation or inheritance from a widespread Denisovan lineage. The Harbin cranium also contains Denisovan mitochondrial DNA preserved within dental calculus, strengthening the genetic link. This connection suggests that the large-bodied Denisovans of northeastern Asia may descend from or share ancestry with the lineage represented by Denisova 25. A Denisovan tooth from Laos is closely linked to the Baishia mandible, also known as the Siahe mandible. Far to the southwest, traces of Denisovans also appear in Baishia Karst Cave on the Tibetan Plateau. A robust mandible discovered there and dated to the middle Pleistocene carries Denisovan mitochondrial DNA, marking the site as another anchor point for Denisovan occupation. The survival of these populations at high altitude implies advanced local adaptation, perhaps involving physiological changes to oxygen metabolism. The genetic and morphological affinities between Denisova 25, Harbin, and Baishia point to a Denisovan radiation stretching across a vast expanse from the Altai through northeastern China and onto the Tibetan Plateau. The common ancestry among these three may reflect a core Denisovan range in Central and East Asia. If so, Denisova 25 represents an early stage of this radiation, making it crucial to any reconstruction of Denisovan dispersal patterns. The relationship between Neanderthals and Denisovans continues to defy simple explanation. The genome of Denisova 25 reveals that ancestral Neanderthal admixture events occurred repeatedly. Denisova 25 carries between 3 and 6 percent Neanderthal ancestry, more than Denisova 3, who carries approximately 2 percent. Not only did Denisovans receive more than one pulse of Neanderthal DNA, the Neanderthal source populations themselves were distinct. At least one pulse came from a Neanderthal lineage that diverged more than 200,000 years ago from the Neanderthal branches represented by Vindhya and Chagyaskaya. Moreover, analysis indicates that gene flow also moved in the other direction. The genetic relationship between Denisova 5 and Neanderthal, and both Denisova 25 and Denisova 3, reveals that a Denisovan population contributed ancestry to the Neanderthal population that later produced Denisova V. 
These discoveries reveal a wide frontier at the boundary of Denisovan and Neanderthal ranges, where recurring contact produced a tangle of ancestry. Yet the interbreeding had limited lasting effects on the larger history of either species. Later Denisovan and Neanderthal populations show little evidence of retaining most of these mixed lineages. The biological and geographic barriers between Neanderthals and Denisovans must therefore have been permeable, though not enough to permit wholesale fusion. The population turnovers at Denisova Cave suggest that migrants from elsewhere repeatedly replaced local mixed groups. Some of these turnovers likely came from the south, others may have come from East Asia. The most surprising feature of Denisova 25 is not its Neanderthal ancestry, but its inheritance from a population older than either Neanderthals or modern humans. Analysis of patterns in allele sharing, especially positions where present-day Africans carry a derived allele and Denisovans carry an ancestral allele, indicates that Denisovans received DNA from a deeply diverged hominin population before Denisova 25 and Denisova 3 separated. This discovery resolves a long-standing mystery. Earlier observations noted that Neanderthals share more derived alleles with Africans than Denisovans do, an asymmetric pattern that could be explained only by gene flow. With Denisova 25, it is now clear that the explanation involves two separate events. Early modern related gene flow into Neanderthals and even earlier gene flow into Denisovans from a much older hominin. The new Denisovan genome preserves longer signatures of this introgression than Denisova 3. In both genomes, sections of unusual sequence divergence and exceptionally high heterozygosity point to fragments originating from this earlier hominin. These superarchaic candidates are difficult to isolate precisely, but their presence supports the view that the Denisovan population descended in part from a lineage far older than the branch that gave rise to Denisovans, Neanderthals, and modern humans. Denisovans have been said to be a meeting point of multiple deeply diverged ancestries. Indeed, the study concludes that an unknown super-archaic hominin contributed DNA to the ancestors of Denisovans. This may reflect interbreeding with a population that branched off more than one million years ago. If so, it would make Denisovans the only known hominin group whose ancestry includes contributions from three deeply separated lineages, their own primary branch, a Neanderthal branch, and a super-archaic branch. Patterns within the Denisovan data suggest that the Altai was repeatedly visited by separate Denisovan populations. The ancestry carried by Denisova 25 is distinct from that of Denisova 3. Denisova 8, another tooth from the cave, appears closer to Denisova 25 than to Denisova 3, suggesting that an early population dominated the region before being displaced. The population represented by Denisova 25 probably did not originate in the Altai. Rather, this group likely occupied a larger homeland to the south, perhaps in central or northeastern Asia. When ecological fluctuations opened the Altai, Denisovans moved northward. Later climatic or competitive events may have forced them out, allowing Neanderthal occupation. Further shifts led to re-entry of later Denisovans, whose ancestry is represented by Denisova III. This picture of repeated migration and replacement parallels the dynamic patterns seen in Middle Pleistocene Europe, where Neanderthal ancestry shifts over time and contacts with other archaic lineages occurred. The Denisovan case, however, appears to reflect a broader ecological and geographic range. The new genome of Denisova 25 strengthens the view that Denisovans flourished across Asia. The Harbin cranium shows a form compatible with the large-toothed, large-bodied populations one might expect of northern cold-adapted groups. The Baishia mandible demonstrates occupation of the Tibetan plateau, where thin air challenges all but the most resilient of species. The common ancestry signals found between Denisova 25, Harbin, and Baishia imply that these specimens represent only a small sampling of Denisovan diversity. Indeed, the Denisovan range may have covered eastern Siberia, northern China, Central Asia, and the Himalayan borderlands. Each discovery adds new complexity. The Harbin fossil, with its monumental cranial size and formidable brow, appears near one end of the Denisovan morphological spectrum. 
the Baishia mandible, robust and uniquely suited to rugged environments, stands at another ecological extreme, perched above the cloud line. Meanwhile, Denisova 25's simpler molar still aligns with the Harbin specimen in outline, indicating that even earlier Denisovans possessed some key traits that later flourished across Asia. These threads weave a picture of Denisovans not as a single small population in Siberia, but as a wide-ranging, structured species with deep time roots, pockets of isolation, and repeated interactions with close relatives. From a fragment of tooth in a cave chamber, scientists have extracted a story of migrations, interbreeding, and survival. Denisova 25 reveals that the Denisovan lineage arose from deep evolutionary roots, accompanied by pulses of Neanderthal contact and super-archaic inheritance. The early Altai population lived in isolation, vulnerable to displacement, and eventually replaced by later migrants. Its echoes in northeastern China and Tibet show that this was not a small splinter group, but part of a widespread population that adapted to some of the most demanding environments on Earth. The similarities between the Denisova 25 molar and the Harbin molar suggest that Denisovan dental traits were broadly distributed. The presence of Denisovans on the Tibetan plateau further hints that Denisovan adaptations may have helped later human settlement of high-altitude environments. Even without a complete skeleton, Denisova 25 tells a vibrant story. It shows that this early population was genetically distinct from later arrivals, preserving a snapshot of Denisovan ancestry much closer to its origins. These individuals carried the signatures of a super-archaic group whose identity remains unknown, linking Denisovans to evolutionary depths well beyond their Neanderthal cousins. Through the prism of Denisova 25, the Denisovan world looks much larger, older, and more complex than imagined when the first finger bone yielded its secrets. There is now every reason to believe that other Denisovan populations await discovery across Asia. Each new fragment, each trace of DNA, promises to reveal still more about a people who lived, died, and mingled with others long before our own lineage emerged into the open. The ancient molar does more than expand our knowledge of a single individual. It confirms that the Denisovan story is interlaced with migrations, replacements, and encounters with older hominin strains. Ancient DNA forces us to discard any notion of simple, linear inheritance. In light of Denisova 25, that rings louder than ever. The Denisovan story is not a straight line, but a constellation. We do not yet know where all its points lie. But with Denisova 25, we know there are more of them, and we know that they extend further back than we once dared consider. Click on these other videos to continue down the rabbit hole and thank you for watching.